Welcome to lesson 17 of Learn C. In this lesson, we're just going to take um, what we did in lesson 16 and do make functions and make it a little bit more modular. Um, the reason is we're getting on our way to an actual program that's going to do, remember the, the challenge of the, the thousand data points from your boss, the calibration data we need to get the slopes and intercepts from. And so, um, uh, so this, by making by making the calculation of the regression data more modular, it makes it easier to transfer into a different program. So how do you modularize um, uh, a program? It's it's pretty, uh, this, in this case, it's gonna be pretty easy. There's a couple of changes we have to do. We're gonna have to send the X and Y array data into the functions, right? So um, we're gonna change that, make them arrays. Oh, I forgot to mention. So this is lesson 17. I just took lesson 16 and cut and paste the, 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 the program from 16 into lesson 17. I've already made the new project, lesson 17. And in lesson 17, I copied uh, 2051 from lesson 16, the, to, the, uh, the data file that we've been using uh, into that um, file as well, into that folder as well. So I did that. Now, um, what we want to do is we want to make um, three, if we were going to modularize this, so instead of doing this, all this calculations and stuff, i comment that out just for a second. Right? What I would really like to do is say m equals and then some function name get slope times, and all we need is the x and y variables, and then e equals get intercept x and y, give the x, y data set, r2 equals get r2, not d2, of x and y. That would be nicer, and then this would all go, this stuff would all go away. We wouldn't have to declare a lot of these variables here, like all these, you know, all these sums. We wouldn't have to declare up here and all this stuff. So it would become a much, much more simple program, right? That's that's what I would. That's so when I'm trying to make a program more modular, I write what I would want to see in main first, and then try to make the function actually do that. Okay, so let's make these three functions: get slope, get intercept, get r2. All going to return a floating point value float get slope and there are two inputs a floating point array x and y now when you're declaring um an input dummy variable in a subroutine in a function or subroutine um, and it's an array, you just leave what the contents of the array inside blank. It will see, it's actually smart enough to know that, oh, it's 10, it's a 10 element array. Okay, I'll, I'll make a 10 element array when I call that function. They have to declare them the top, then I'm going to take all of them, copy them down to the bottom. And then I'm going to make get slope first. So I'm going to go here. The last line of this is going to be return um, slope, right? So I'm going to go in here. This is the trick. Go in here, and I'm just going to cut and paste everything from the guts. Okay. 
here into here. A lot of stuff we're not going to need, right? Inside this subroutine, right? We're not going to need to declare the floating point arrays. We're not going to need the file stuff. We're not going to, we're obviously not going to call itself. We only need slope on this particular version, so we don't need anything else there. So we're not going to need, we're not going to need all those variables. You can declare them, but you don't have to, right? I mean, you just, I'm going to leave it blank just for an, I'm going to do that, do that. So that was easy, right? That's that's a lot quicker to just cut and paste the functionality first. But now there's a couple of differences here is that you have, um, you have to put I in here because now we're talking about arrays. That should work, right? Then, to calculate the intercept, you know, you have to calculate the slope to calculate the intercept. So then in the intercept, when I go down here, let's say I'm going to take all this stuff. inside of the get slope to get intercept and I need And forget r squared. Oops. Coding really helps. You troubleshoot. So now when I go back up to the top, the main program, I'm going to clean all this stuff up. I don't need all this stuff. I don't need all that. I don't need R. I don't need the denominator. I don't even need N. I don't need all these remnants that I've already taken care of. I don't need all this stuff. A really clear program, right? Declare variables. Open file, read data, cal calculate values, 
and down and out. Wow, it's really it's a lot more parsimonious, right? We didn't have, there's not that much deep there's not that much detail in the main anymore. All the guts, all the complicated stuff has been outsourced way down to the bottom to all these subroutines. So main's a lot easier to read. That's a good example of modularity. Good. Okay, so there's a couple of things to note here. Is um, uh, for, well, let's just see if it works, right? Oops, um, oops, so I made a mistake here. I didn't change these to arrays. Like that, recompile. And when I get up here, now it works. Yeah, I, that was my test to make sure that it works. So that, so it works, this modular program works. There's a couple of details here. Um, Main thing, so th there's a slight um, sidebar here on arrays. Arrays really are pointers in disguise, and so when you send the when you send the uh, just the general x and y term, you're actually sending the um, you're actually sending more than just the uh, the contents of it. So it's, it's a, there's a little nuance there. So if you're getting into writing functions and you're going to be sending array arguments in there, there are ways you can you know all that indirection stuff. You can get away without and sometimes for um, uh, for arrays. That's um, uh, that's uh, one thing to mention. And the other thing to mention, which is this is really you know computer scientists. You know there's a, there's always a it's kind of a uh, it's not a rivalry, but you know, uh, computer scientists computer scientists really are the pros in programming, and um, engineers are sort of amateurs, right? We're all just we, we program because we have to a lot of times to get data done or something like that. And then if we're software engineers, then we're then we start becoming more like computer scientists. And so th the elegance of this algorithm is really lousy in that I have to calculate the sum x, sum y, sum x x, and sum y y three times instead of one. Right for this thing, all for the sake of making it look pretty up here, right? So we have to calculate and down here and get and get intercept. I'm doing the for loop and get R2. I'm doing the for loop and so on. So yeah, all in the name of just making this clearer, right? If it's only 10 points and it t happens just in a snap, so that's not a deal. That's not really an issue in the modern age of computing where we have so much extra capacity. However, if you're doing it with a small embedded system, you're going to have to become more elegant with your more parsimonious with um, uh, loops and um, added data, add a, added um, data structures that you're going to add to the system by adding more uh, subroutines. So there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of nuance to what I did that um, computer scientists will get upset about. They'll go, "Hey Olson, why are you teaching students to do it this way? I'm teaching you to do it this way because it's really easy. Because it's really easy." to read here and it was really easy just to cut and paste and do the same thing three times in three different subroutines that was easier than the lessons that we learned from the swap algorithm where we had to actually send um where we would just have one thing and we would have these things all as uh, arguments here that would be output arguments inside the argument list that would be the difference different way to do that and eh, i don't for the sake of this course and for the sake of um, making something look pretty, this is nice. So that's sort of the engineer versus computer scientist uh, debate, if you will. This imaginary debate I'm having with computer scientists. Um, okay, so now we have, we're going to take these subroutines, we're going to cut and paste them into lesson 18. That's why I did this uh, lesson. Okay, next lesson. 
stop. It's not the end of the lesson. I forgot the one thing that I forgot last time in lesson 16 that's, that I just realized is we opened the file, but we didn't close it. So here we got to close it. You notice the function, the program worked. What that, that's uh, opening files without closing them can cause uh, memory issues and can cause problems on your disk. So if you're reading it and you don't close it, it's not as bad as if you're writing it, you don't close it. But in general, um, uh, it's one of those little minor errors. It doesn't show up as an error in your uh, program, for example, but it, it does, long term, it can really create problems in your uh, on your computer. So yeah, I forgot to do the F close. So make sure you do the F close. Now, now lesson 17 is over.